All right, streaming today from a new location. Uh, in this location, there's going to be some background noise. There's no way around it. Uh, but hey, plants and red brick. Well, we're going to get started with Anyone Can Do It. Uh, Anyone Can Do It, Manuel Munoz. Uh, I've never read anything by Manuel Munoz. Uh, I learned about, I learned of him literally just through this book, uh, the Penguin book. So what I can do right now is basically start us off on, um, let me just double check how this works. Just start off on, on some pre-reading, uh, but this pre-reading right now isn't working. So give me a second, let me, uh, let me see if I can make my uh, desktop kind of pop up real quick. Okay, it's a little ugly, but it's there. And uh, let me just make sure. Hang on. And if I cover that, what happens? Okay. Okay, so it's a little messed up. Let me uh, see if I can fit that in. Um. Okay, and that's more or less doable. Not perfect, but that's an actual screen that you can look at. So, and yeah, you're getting all these terrible effects of me using my OBS on myself. So these uh, recursive effects, uh, ignore them, please. So I've I actually read a little bit. I tried to read a little bit just before starting because I don't I don't have a lot of time today. I have one hour before I have to go. Uh, I tried to read, uh, and given that this is a 2019 uh, story, it seems like there's actually just a lot of reviews by other writers or people who are serious about writing. Uh, so I've just been finding, you know, unlike some of the other stories down in our down um, that I've done previously. Uh, in this uh, in this channel, uh, it looks like with Manuel Munoz, we're getting a bunch of we're getting a bunch of reviews by private bloggers. Um, that said, I do have quite a bit of um, time pressure, so today my pre-reading is going to be pretty limited. And here's what I can say that I remember about the story: uh, anyone can do it. Is about um, illegal immigration. And it's, even though it's about it in a sort of fuzzy way, it's not, it's not going to hit you on the hammer, uh, hit you over the head with it like a hammer. It doesn't even state the words, from what I recall, it doesn't state the words immigration or illegal like ever. So it's more of a human angle on that particular issue. That's what I know so far. That's literally all I know. Now, I'm going to look at this quick review over here, and then I'm going to look at Goodreads really quickly and just see how those, like, let's just see what morsels or what clues I can find in the next like five ish minutes before I get started reading. I'll zoom in real quick. Can a short story do anything? Interesting random detail for me as a teacher. <laughs> this is super interesting actually, but okay. It's not clear whether the protagonist is actually legal. That's interesting, that uncertainty. It's not clear that her claim would be recognized by the INS. Uh, I do mean INS rather than ICE. Because it's, okay, so I guess INS is the old version of ICE.
and look at it from an intensely personal lens. You know, this is the kind of fiction that cuts through the politics and gets at the humanity uh, that I just enjoy when I read these things. Because when you are reading the news, when you're reading, when you're listening to arguments, uh, oftentimes you kind of it's easy to get lost in the statistics and the rhetorically best thing to say to win the argument. But when we have short fiction that kind of comes in, you know, can we get the human picture? So uh, I'm glad that this, you know, uh, seemingly intelligent fellow, politics and prose, I feel like, have I seen that before? Politics, minor detour right now. Oh, it's a bookstore in Washington, D.C. Um, well, I don't know too much about it. I don't think I have heard about it. Uh, but this intelligent seeming fellow, Jacob Weber, uh, I'm just glad that he is pointing this particular thing out looking at this issue, a big social issue from an intensely personal lens. Uh, it makes me excited to read this. Um, I'm kind of skimming through the rest. If you're a student, I doubt you even need my help. This is not difficult. The meaning's right there. Nobody could miss the parts of the politics that kind of affect the human experience. But This is an interesting question. Is it just written for those who already believe? Are we gonna actually change any minds through this story? Does it actually have any effect to tell this story? Or is it just preaching to the choir? I think that's a good question to have in, in the back of my mind. I'm not sure that's gonna be the primary question once I actually start reading, but that seems like a useful question, a useful way of thinking about fiction, at least the form of fiction as I read it. Now let's move into Goodreads and see what I can pull up. So it looks like we're getting um, not the actual short story. I mean, it's such a new story that we don't get the, we don't get the actual sto short story of it. We only get the, um, we only get the, um, the, the book and the collections where this comes out. So it's going to be hard to get, uh, it's going to be hard to get uh, the actual, uh, what do you call it, the review for this particular story, but let's try. Let's try. So what I'm doing is I'm doing control F and I'm just looking for anyone can, okay? So I'm going to hit more. Control F and looking at anyone, anyone can. Okay, in particular long reviews, if there's any long review, I'm hitting anyone can every single time. I'm hitting that enter button just to see what might pop up. Okay, I'm not seeing anything right now. Okay, you know what? What I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna do dot 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 more and I'm just gonna keep hitting all of the dot 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 mores okay and what I want to what I'm just doing right now in the next minute is I'm just looking for as many potential I, I'm just expanding the text here so that I can find potentially a review of this particular short story if I can't then obviously you know I'm not gonna be too stubborn about it I'm just gonna move on to looking at some generic reviews but I'm hoping to find particular review of this story, okay? Because I want to find clues that helps me enjoy the story from the first read, that I don't have to like work overly hard. To I'm a lazy reader in a way. Um, so let's look for the word anyone. Okay, and no, the word anyone does not come up, okay? So I'm a lazy reader. I don't want to just, my investment of five minutes up front is going to is gonna save me the effort of just being lost when I'm reading this thing. So let's look at some of these longer reviews. So this is a great longer review with 10 likes. So let's start here. What do you see in the dark? Where we have like a film student speaking here. The noir techniques of Hitchcock. Working class murder madness longing. 
This person is clearly someone who writes quite a bit for fun. Teresa, Mexican-American daughter of a mother who left to chase dreams of love in Texas. That, isn't that a little bit like that Disney movie? I <laughs> uh, forgot the name. Coco. <laughs> okay, here we go. I'm just, I'm just moving around. I, I feel like it's a little... Okay, here. My primary criticism is that the narrative is dry, cerebral. I was academically stimulated by the style, but occasionally it felt detached, which is an opposite reaction, by the way, of intensely personal look, okay? The previous reviewer in the, in the blog was talking about an intensely personal look, and on the other hand, we have this other reviewer who's talking about technique, technicality, right, of writing the thing, and apparently it's a little dry and cerebral for her. I think it's a her. Uh, I'm looking for one more long review. Here's another long review. He's a great writer. I'm starting at the bottom just because sometimes uh, these long reviewers, <laughs> it helps to just get to the point. Pro Shrimmers, uh, Shrimmers, Shimmers. Um, and then, is this a compliment? I can't tell what that means. <laughs> so, I love this book, uh, California Bakersfield. Oh, you know what? This is probably not the book where the short story comes out. This is probably the story where the short... Oh my goodness. I... Now that I think about it, I probably should have looked up. Anyone can do it. Actually, maybe it wasn't... Maybe it was not published in a book yet. Yeah, it was not published in a book yet. It was only published on uh, in a magazine. Oh, it's a very that's I guess that's what happens when you have a 2019 story. Um, it's not from this book. It's it's not published in a book yet, other than the best American short stories. Okay, that's why it's so hard to find it. Um, which means that the previous review I just read about how it's dry and cerebral may no longer be applicable because that's for a story. As for a novel, it's a novel. This is a full novel um, that was published when? In 2011. So that's eight years ago compared to eight, eight years prior to Anyone Can Do It. All right. I think that's enough for pre-reading. You know, uh, it looks like Goodreads is not useful for a story that's literally just published in a, you know, in this magazine. What's the magazine? It was, it was published in this magazine. Let me actually find it for you. Uh, uh, Ziziva, right, Ziziva. Uh, uh, prestigious, from what I know. Uh, Ziziva. So we have the story that was published in, any, uh, in Ziziva, never published in a book. So Goodreads doesn't have any materials on it because Goodreads tends to be book oriented, which means that the only the only a pre reading I can do is based on people's personal blogs about it, which honestly might be a better thing. I mean, maybe for future, maybe for future streams, maybe I should just focus on very recent stories. But here's what I know: illegal immigration. It's not even clear whether the main character is illegal. Okay, and I'm hoping for an emotional connection with or like a human look at, of, at an intensely personal uh, issue especially in 2019 when it was still the era of Donald Trump uh, and, illegal, and illegal immigration was you know one of the hot topics hot button topics so I'm hoping for something that kind of cuts through the noise and gets to the reality quote unquote of, uh, of human experience let's go so I'm here, and I'm gonna switch over to the mini. All right, here we go. All right, and now we're getting started. Okay, that first sentence, her immediate concern was money. Um, it's funny because now that I know that it's about illegal immigration, you know, money being the first thing already is a bit of a diversion. I like that.
Hang on, let me let me try to figure out how to manage uh, the noise. Oops. Okay, here we go. Delfina. Only a month. Drive into town center to use a payphone to call back to Texas where Delfina is from. Long enough for the husband to be welcomed along to the field work. So this is a sort of economy, there's a sort of economy um, that exists, which suggests the illegal immigration. Okay, I'm gonna move on. So she's differentiated from the other woman a little bit. She's stronger in a way, less dependent, I think. I'm reading a little fast and I'm reading at a pace that I've never read for the stream before. I'm reading at a pace where I understand, where I feel like I understand 85% of what's going on. Um, and I'm doing it intentionally because I actually don't have that much time today, but also because Maybe it might be informative to see how I can, I mean, even for me, just to see how I can stay connected to the story, even though I'm not, you know, necessarily, hmm, I don't have the time, I don't have the luxury of, uh, of time and uh, emotional, uh, what do you call that, like padding, you know, so we'll see. Maybe this is going to be a huge, terrible failure, but we'll try something with this. The wan blur of television sets. That's great. That's a great phrase. Wait, the woman? Who's the woman? Oh, one of the women. Okay. Could make out the long sleeves of a husband's worship. Neighbors. I wonder why this description. When I started this. Sometimes they don't come back right away. But don't worry, they'll be back soon. We're talking about the men, I think, because it might be taken away. So it's a little ominous. Me llamo Lis. That's, my name is Lis. Same age, age as hers. Okay, so we have Delfina and Lis. We have Delfina and Lis. Huh. I see. The prices have been going up, so it's been hard to... So normally people would just kind of come in really easily, but apparently with the prices going up, you know, people don't. So we have this economy of inflation pot potentially, of prices going up. And so we have uh, the official economy. Things are getting more expensive, but these potentially e illegal workers, you know, they're not making as much money there, so they're not moving in as quickly. Betraying nothing, that's interesting. Betraying nothing, like she's a little suspicious, potentially, of Lise. She had not told this woman that she was from Texas. So what would the husband have said? I see, what's his secret? It's interesting, secrets within secrets. The first secret is we're illegal. The second secret is the men are speaking. Your car, I see, I see. We're dis uh, interesting. We drove it from Texas, so that's that's defusing the tension.
Moving to California was a bad idea, okay. So they're in California. Except for the true one, that she had not want to be left alone with her mother. Wait, the woman reminded... Okay, so this is about lease. Okay. Stop me if you don't have California. So I try not to try to... Okay. Interesting. That's a fact. That's an interesting little fact about illegal immigration I would never have learned. But of course, if the police suspect you in California, one of the ways they might suspect you is if you don't have a California plate. Hmm. Oh, interesting. Okay, that took me a little bit to process these two paragraphs over here. But the first, par the, this paragraph is actually this first paragraph is actually a defense, and we learned that in this part. She can't deny lease a ride because of, I guess, a sort of common, um, like like a solidarity, I guess, between these um, uh, illegal potentially illegal immigrants, right? So she can't deny Lise the ride, but she's trying by explaining why she doesn't drive. So that's a, that's a defense. She's trying not to get too close because things are sketchy, which is, again, it's one of the costs of a society where, you don't, where you're not trusted. <laughs> Interesting, this sort of politics, you know, this sort of internal politics that we think of when we think of like, for example, like a stereotypical Japanese uh, interaction, a uh, high context interaction. She can no longer make the request she lost. But she's not fully defeated. She's gonna come and make that request. Please drive me somewhere. So what's interesting about the dialogue here is we have no quotation marks. So we're, we're blending between the narration and dialogue really quickly, um, really uh, like seamlessly, uh, which makes it a little jarring. Um, the, the voice of the narrator is kind of being melded into the voices of the characters. Um, not sure if that's, you know, uh, I don't know right now what to think about that. It's just that I'm noticing it. So they're from Mexico, Guanajuato. And then from Texas, Del says Delfina, where she's, Delfina's defensive. We know that Delfina's defensive. She's, you know, she's good at not giving away information. Um, so, interesting bit. Whereas Guanajuato, she, the, you know, Lise actually showed her cards and, and Delfina didn't. Where we drove from, from, she added, as if to remind her. That's a little, honestly, it's a little bitchy. Where we, where we drove from. That's a little, it's a little tense. I feel that. Falling back into the shadow. Delfina's husband had been rounded up. So, so it's a tense situation. It's like Delfina's kind of saying, you know, F you. But then Lise is also like, hey, we're all F'd together. It's, it's, it's interesting, actually. Um, it's an interesting little slice of internal like politics. I don't know if there's a better word for it right now. Uh, in the in the in the in the in the in the midst of a an, of an external politics, you know, of a of a of an extremely life changing type of politics, where the husbands are going to get rounded up and maybe sent back, ex uh, deported. Huh? Who who's talking right now? At least. Is that right? Sort of a perfunctory little automatic reaction. 
So Lisa is talking too much potentially. Pobrecito, poor thing. Sometimes I think I think it's a terrible thing to be alone. What the heck just happened? Sometimes I think he had the right idea. It's a terrible thing to go to be alone. So he went back. He wanted to go back to Mexico. Only half true. That it was hard to make a go of it alone, but it could be just as hard to live in a house without kindness. Oh, I see. Being alone isn't the worst thing if you are together without kindness. It sounds like the husband and Delfina have no kindness in between them. But then you two came with your niño. How old is he? We have a we have a son, a four-year-old son. Lise has a 10-year-old daughter. Nimodo. It's part of life. The Texas side of Mexico? I'm kind of confused right now. Not even in the dark. They're in the dark. So the truth is, Delfina's rent is due on the first. But only saying no would mean that this wasn't true. I didn't fully understand that. I'm going to skip because maybe it is significant, but I'm, I, I'm going to take the gamble and assume it's not very significant. I do want to know, though, the darkness. I do want to know where physically they are. Like, where are they? Her immediate concern... Oh, interesting that, that I came back with the rent. Right. Her immediate concern was money because the mon men didn't come back home. So she's scared what's going to happen. Okay. When the street fell silent, that the screen doors of the dark houses opened and the woman came out to sit on the steps, so we're outside. We're outside. With the narrow... Okay. There's a dirt yard. I see, they're outside. So Delfina is outside for some reason because she's worried. She's worried about the, the husband. Okay, I kind of missed all of this in the beginning because I was kind of rushing. Um, but yeah, it's good to go back and see what happened there. I definitely recommend doing that every once in a while when you feel like you're lost. Okay. So right now we're building, we're building, we're building. We have Delfina who's being uh, defensive, you know, and sort of coy and like kind of playing a certain type of checkers or chess. Uh, Lise is trying to make a request of some sort, we don't know, but they're both worried. They're both out in the dark, outside, uh, trying to kind of bide the time because we don't know what's happening to the husbands. Simultaneously, Delphine is not happy in her married life. She has that four-year-old son who doesn't know anything about anything, but the father, the, the husband, she's, his hus uh, he is not necessarily kind to Delphina. So Delphina isn't necessarily happy. She's just living the life she is, and she's going to need money to keep going. Excuse me. It's not good to run low on money. You know, that press is real, man. If you have to keep making money, it's, that's very stressful. Apparently, Lise is getting a little desperate, trying to make some sort of appeal really wanted something else. What would you say about taking the car out to the peach orchards? 
fully okay. I pay for half the gas. Oh, Lise wants to go out and work. Lise wants to go to work, and Delphina is. Okay. You're from Texas, at least, but press no further. I wonder what the car in the Texas... Okay. Oh, you're from Texas. As in, you're American, you shouldn't worry. So that's kind of calling the bluff. So Delphina is probably not just American. Because why would Delphina be afraid to drive a car if she's from Texas? I guess, technically, if the husband isn't, then... I guess... So it's a little confounding. We don't know for sure. It was none of any strange business, but the husband had never allowed her to work. She knew what woman would like, least thought about woman like her. Oh, there's sort of a class situation going on. Because there are certain women who don't work, and a certain women who do work. Lise is one of the women who do work, and Delphina isn't. Even Delphina, that name, now that, now that I kind of hear it, has a sort of like, has a, that Greek um element you know which makes it feel um maybe like a different class you know quote unquote so lease is uh seems like a much more like a casual like it's like an abbreviation of lisa or elizabeth or i don't know i don't know what latin names exactly kind of uh, conform to but delphina does sound kind of like fancier right so there is a bit of a hmm. There is a bit of a class situation here, where Lise wants to work and Delphina does, and she never has worked. Anyone can do it. It's just that no one really wants. Anyone can do it. Anyone can do it. Anyone can do it. Duh. That, 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 that hits, that hits in a way that I wasn't expecting. Anyone can do it. It's like, yeah, well, screw your class, you can do it. It's, 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 that's not normally the way, that's not what the way Lise is actually meaning it. Lise was meaning it as, um, it's easy. Even if you're dumb, even if you're dumb and unskilled, you can do it, is kind of her angle. But then in this context, the way the way that the words, like the way these these paraphrase, uh, these uh, these paragraphs kind of lead up, it's like, oh, you're from Texas, oh, and oh, you never worked, you were never allowed to work, you're not one of those women who work. Anyone can do it, as in, come down to the level of. So this is not what Lisa's saying. This is an interesting form of irony. It's actually a beautiful form of irony where the character is saying one thing, but the character isn't meaning some other thing. In fact, it's actually the narrator, right? But the narrator that's meaning something different. That's actually really juicy. It's really interesting. Uh, because what the narrator is maybe meaning is, hey, anyone, you too, who has never worked ever, can do it. Because... That's what happens when your husbands get taken, rounded up and taken away. You gotta work. You gotta get money. <sighs> Actually, that's a beautiful, honestly, that's such an amazing irony there. Um, I, 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 I love that sentence, how it hit. Uh, it took me like a minute to process that, but yeah, that was so good. So good. Delphina's being defensive still, or, you know, reticent still, aloof still. Lise reminds Delphina of her sister, the one who's talkative and tries to persuade. So Lise is defeated now, she's walking. 
she's very defeated. Delfina didn't even reply. Shame, lease. So it, that rejection. She was about to lead him to the car, so she, you know, she refused lease on the pretense that she wouldn't drive. What's TGNY? I have no idea. A toy aisle. It's like a store of some sort. Payphone to call her mother in Texas. He left you, the mother said. Oh, so the mother is extremely pessimistic and uh, a little bit dramatic. Because the mother wants her back in Texas. So she's putting another phone in, uh, uh, she's putting another a um, coin in there to extend the phone call. Of course you're calling for money. If he's a good father, he'll find a way to send some if, if he can't get back. <laughs> Delphina's fighting her mother. Okay, Delphina is about to get into this extremely ugly fight with her mother about the two of them, the father and the mother, but her voice is lost anyway. Hung up, upset, natural. She would have to apologize when the worst of the financial troubles would be upon her. But for the moment, yes. She relished a little petty, petty victory, right? She relishes the petty victory. Right now, Delfina, that's actually, it's actually really exciting. Um, I don't know if exciting is the right word, but this is such a good moment of humanity because even though on paper, in the newspapers, right, this whole tragedy, okay, of, of, of your husbands being rounded up by ICE, right, or INC or whatever it was called back in the day, <coughs> Would be something that the that the that the that the wives should rationally be like, oh, we need money, so they're supposed to rationally act, right? Here we have this moment of petty victory against the mother, you know, that pride, and uh, and and that is so realistic, that's so real, that's that is how people are, you know. So I'm just thinking about that right now. Yes. She let slip the payphone dimes? Oh, she's hurrying because she's scared of the, the, the person, the clerk. Ice cream. The dollar. We're talking dimes and dollars right now, man. And this money is precious. We, we, want, the, we want the child in ignorance. Stolen. Okay. Surprisingly heavy.
she lets him steal it. That moment of tenderness, tender, uh, obviously also illegal, <laughs> illegal tenderness. Okay. <sighs> Lease is out there. When was the S? So talking, talking, talking. Good thing we didn't go to the orchards after all. It kind of stalled out there. No, interesting. Oh, she's being honest suddenly. We got ice cream. Um, I have this feeling we're actually about we're about close to the end. Um, even though like nothing happened. Um, I don't know why though. Let's keep going. I actually don't even want to check if we're close to the end. I, feel, I just feel like it. What? What's going on here? For breakfast. Ice cream for breakfast. What a Saturday. Lise was... Uh, Lise was laboring, and even Lise's daughter, who is 10, is not out helping. She is sacrificing herself, that she believed herself to hold. The mothers of Mexico sacrifice themselves for their children. I think it's a good idea. This is referring to the idea of going out to that farm. Tomorrow, Sundays at least. But work never waits, she says. El dia de Dios. I didn't even think of it. Don't worry about it. We can wait until Monday. That way the children will be at school, like I told you. So Lise. Interesting that Delfina doesn't want to work on Sunday and least least wants to push it. What's your name? Irma. Anyone can do it. Anyone can do it. And this, this thing is that even after all that pride, after all the defense, at the end of the day, she's going to work on Sunday, on you know, uh, the day of the Lord, uh, El Dia de los, del Dios or something, right? Um, after all that, Delfina has been kind of humbled. Anyone can do it. To have them come back will mean the lull of normalcy, which is an amazing phrase because it's the lull of normalcy because it's like a fake normalcy, right? Because, of, I mean, I mean that's an inversion of what we're expecting. The, to have them come back would mean the return of normalcy is probably what I would have expected and what I think most people would have expected right there, but the lull of normalcy, normalcy can suggest that that's also temporary, that the men can be taken away at any time. That's such a good single word choice that makes, that makes this life so real, right? Kiki, I'm actually a little surprised that we were moving on to the next day. Um, because we've already we've already sort of humbled Delfina, so I'm kind of not sure what's what's next. Maybe Delfina flips out, you know. Maybe she reacts the opposite way. <sighs> the 
work shirts, the knock, lease, Irma. Warning. It's interesting. We'll be back in the middle of the afternoon. We're warning you. I'm actually not entirely sure how, how exactly that is a warning, but that's interesting. Right. That's, that's a little painful right here. She wished she had asked Kiki if he had been dreaming about his father. This is a reference back to the, to the mother, to the grandma from Kiki's perspective. Did you dream of your father? So there's this part of, there's this part of um, Delfina who just wants anything to happen, to show a sign that things will return to normal. If Kiki dreams, this is clearly superstitious, the superstition of our grandmother. But if Kiki just dreams of father, then that's at least one sign that he's gonna come back that, that I won't, that I, as Delfina, won't have to keep working like this, that things are going to be normal again. But she hasn't asked Kiki. She's only regretting it. What are Costales? Sacks, sacks, okay. Bean tacos to keep them through. Early in the dawn. Wait here. Lisa's exited, approaching the man. I feel scared a little, like what's happening? Because these are men and these are two women. Two rows for now, what, what we do what we can, if we're fast, he'll give us more. And he's letting us use the ladder free of charge. They charge sometimes for that ladder. 50-50, half and half. Exactly how much we brought in. This little bit of, this, this concrete sort of exp, ex, exposition of how the work actually works, it's interesting. It's an introduction to a world that I do not know, that the readers, that many readers will not know. Because um, of course, it's been optimized over time. Of course, it has evolved over time to be a certain way. I zoomed out, I zoned out just a little bit. Noon, they're almost done by noon. Lise almost lost to her among the leaves. There in Senki to quiet sigh upon her. Oh, I should have brought the ashes while I was there. They're hot, I can get it. You've walked enough, they're tired. Delphine is resting, Lisa's coming back. She gives Lisa the keys. This little detail, right, is interest it's it's a very real detail. The physicality of that work. Lise is doing the stretching and pulling from the from the top, and then Delfina is doing like the the picking up and the heaving. So you get the thighs burning versus the arms burning. People did work on Sunday. Lise is the realistic one, and Delfina does not know. Delfina does not know. Delfina has been kind of in her little her little. Um, Castle Tower, you know, she's been above the fray. 
So serene that the birds have stopped speaking. The calm of a Sunday silence. This actually is a great moment. This moment of holiness in the orchards. Least disappeared. The empty row. I'm confused. At least take the. I'm confused. This row. What's this row? They had not quite finished the row when the sun. Did least scam her. The galaxy was gone. Oh, I was not. I was. I mean, I was thinking of it. I was thinking of Lee scamming her, but What's gonna happen to the sun? What the hell? Yo, that is... Honestly, I was not expecting such a straightforward scam. That's painful. That takes a lot to do that to a person. Oh my God, she's told me you were sisters. If only he knew her real sister was back in time. Dude, ah. Oh. She's helping the foreman. Oh. They go back. I think it's the first time I've ever come out alone like that. That anybody can do anything and you don't ask questions just because something isn't normal. It's not normal for two women to, to work like that. But anybody can do anything. Anything can happen. But you kept coming. You finished it. And that's how I knew you have kids to feed. That's compassion is so... Oh my, it's so, it's so nice to have this compassion here. A 20. But I believe any story anybody tells me, you can't be to blame if you have faith in people. It's an interesting figure here. Kind of a holy figure. He just believes. I understand. She said it was not. Working. She really didn't. She doesn't. She doesn't understand how this white man can just believe. She's 
she's crying. A store. That car, just a couple more blocks. And the husband, if he does come back, the car. Oh, dude, this, this is so bad. Driven away, leaving the family. Now she's alone. bereft she neither of them would forgive her she's regretting this this the, this life that she made stark in his vacancy there he is waiting for his mama the foreman's oh my god What story had he figured out for himself? He would explain this to his wife back home. Faithful kindness from this man. Irma, hang on, hungry. Uh, he was hungry. She was a girl who did what she was told. Irma was in on the plot. No words to tell where he thought the other girl had gone. Where he dreamed his father was, Digame, she said, tell me. But Kiki had already taken the little metal car from his pocket and he was showing her the car starting from the crook of his arm, how a car had driven away slowly, slowly, and on out past the edge of his little hand and out of their lives forever. That was painful. That was painful. That was painful, man. That was painful. It was painful to see the pride, the humbling. That in, that itself was painful enough. And then after the humbling, you know, I kept thinking it, but I was like, no, no, it won't happen. And it did happen. She got scammed. And now that car is gone. The husband may never come back. So painful, so painful, man. Honestly, I don't feel good. I don't feel good. I feel bad. I feel bad. I feel bad. Because <sighs> her instincts were there. Her instincts were there not to trust not to trust Lise, her instincts were there. And our instincts, or at least my instincts was, no, trust Lise. You know, I'm, I'm more like the foreman, you know, just trusting people. And that's the thing. Being like the foreman, trusting people and being a kind person, that has its place in the story. But also, trusting people the way that Delfina trusted Lise, that has a different place in this story. It is so painful to see both of that collide. Oh my God.
and anyone can be anything, you know, anything could be the truth when in this world. But, oh man, but it's so, it's modulated this truth when you are desperate, when the law is against you and your family. So good. This was so good. Um, it makes me want to read more Manuel Munoz um, because it's not noisy. It's not. It's not like gimmicky. It's just a a, a serving of painful, painful reality. Oh my goodness, that was that was painful. Okay, guys, that's it for this story. I have to go. Like, I have like literally five minutes left before my next thing. So I, I, I kind of wish I could share more of my feelings about this with you guys. But here, Manuel Munoz uh, came out in the Penguin Book of the Modern American Short Story, uh, published 2019. If you enjoyed this reaction okay, to this story, uh, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell for notifications, uh, leave a comment, let me know what you were thinking as you were reading this along with me. Um, I'm also kind of curious, you know, how you are using these live streams to help you with your readings, because I know now there's some of you out there, I assume most of you guys are uh, college students or high school students who are uh, reading advanced stuff. And uh, I just want to know what's actually working for you guys out there. Uh, if you enjoyed this story, please go support you know the writer Manuel Minos because uh, <coughs> writers could use your support. And yeah, uh, stick around. I'll see you guys in the next short story reading. Peace.